What is your path to Dharma? All right. Well, welcome back to the Path to Dharma podcast. Welcome. We're happy to have you here. I'm Shay. I'm Shannon. And we are so excited today because it's been a minute before since we've talked about the Bhagavad Gita and Krishna. Hare Krishna. And today we are going to be digging into the Srimad Bhagavatam. I'm really excited. I've been listening to it repeatedly. I've been reading it over and over and it's really amazing. And we just started. So how are you, Shay? How's that going for you? Yeah, it's going well. I've been listening to it um, and I haven't read much of it until I was preparing for the podcast and I broke out the book. Um, And it's honestly, it's been so helpful hearing it and then reading it because it just seems more familiar that way. Yeah. Um, And yeah, that's been nice. And I'm making so many connections, of course, and I'm like really getting to understand or what feels like understand some of the philosophy that I've been hearing about for years at this point. Like I'm feeling clicks, uh, like puzzle pieces in my head come together. So that has been divine, I would say. Yeah, no, it's been really beautiful reading it. And, and tonight, what we hope to do is just summarize a little bit of um, the first chapter. We're ju- definitely not through all the way through that, but um, we're just going to talk a little bit about the setting. What is the Srimad Bhagavatam? Mm-hmm. Um, who are the main characters? What's going on? What are we talking about here? And the parallels that we're finding already to what is in the Gita. So that's yep. kind of what we wanted to go into today. So um, we did find something Yes. while we were reading here mm-hmm. in chapter Canto, one. Canto one. Canto chapter one. two, actually. It's in chapter two, I believe. You're right. right. We are in chapter two. We're, we're Canto finding- one, chapter two. Right. Text four. Okay. There we and go. And it says, before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respect, respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead Narayan, unto Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Sri Vyas- Vyasudev, the author. Okay, we do so. Does that count? <laughs> now that you've said it, that's it? We're I hope to read so. It. I and so. I think they'll let us know in the comments if we didn't do it correctly. So. Yeah, but I think that's it. So we found that. So first of all, I just want to start out by saying I love the questions in this book. I aspire to think of as good as questions as the sages mm-hmm. are putting <laughs> are mm-hmm. putting to the Rishi here because yes, please. Like I feel like, you know, people get in front of spiritual masters and they, you know, ask questions. And sometimes what we come up with is just not even worthy. So I aspire to ask these good of questions. So let's just start talking about what are we seeing at the very beginning? Do we have a little bit of a setting? What's going on here in the at the very beginning of the Srimad mm-hmm. Bhagavatam? Okay, so from my understanding, there's a king who he's on his deathbed. I, help, help me out a little bit, but he's yeah. dying, right? And yeah. so he um, gives away all his worldly possessions to go sit on the side of a river um, to hopefully reach enlightenment before he dies. And yes. while he's sitting there, a sage, Nar- is it Narayan who actually comes to him to speak the Srimad Bhagavatam for the very first time? Is that correct? Um, I'm actually going to um, let chat GPT clear that up for us <laughs> because I asked for a little summary of the first canto of the characters who's in it, because mm-hmm. there's a lot of names here that are amazing sounding and I just, I need to get them in my ear. So yep, yep. here's the main characters. First, we have Sutta Gaswami. Sutta Gaswami is the narrator of the Bhagavatam. Sutta Goswami, say say it better than I'm saying it. Sutta Goswami, I think. Sutta Goswami, a sage, is speaking to a gathering of sages known as the Rishis. And these they're headed by Sanaka Rishi. Am I saying that one right? Sanaka Rishi and other sages are listed as the second character. So there is a lot of different sages in here that we're going to hear from. And we'll talk about them as they ask their questions because they're Mm -hmm. so good. So we have Sanaka Rishi and other sages. So Sanaka Rishi is the leader of of the assembly of sages. So he's the leader. He, along with other sages, they're super excited and eager to hear Sutta Gasvami narrate the Bhagavatam. 
And so that's what they're gathered to hear. They're gathered to hear yes. a recitation of the Bhagavatam. Um, par, Pariskit, I'm saying this terrible, Pariksit, Maharaja, Pariksit. I am so sorry. I'm the worst. Pariksit is the main character, main focus of the narration in this chapter. He is the descendant of the Kuru dynasty and the son of Abhimanyu and Uttara. Cursed to die in seven days by the Brahmin boy, he uses this time to inquire about spiritual matters. So that's the king. Okay. Yep. That's the king. Okay. I'm sorry, King, for totally just massacring your name. And I'm going to have to go listen to that again. I know. That's why it's been right. so helpful. It's been so helpful. Yeah, to it has been. Ha that's why we've been trying to listen. Okay. So there's the king. So he's been cursed. This says, um, and I guess I don't really remember picking that up and I need to listen again. I know right. that he was going to die and he gave everything away because one of the sages questions is why would somebody do this? <laughs> basically, yep. basically, why would he give everything away um, and give up his body because he shelters others. So that's one of the questions, which is so good. Yeah. Anyway, this says these characters come together to form the context for the teaching and the stories that make up the Srimad Bhagavatam, setting the stage for spiritual discussions and lessons that follow in the following chapters. So this first chapter is, is basically a little introduction and we find out that's what's happening. Yes. And they're coming together to, at the beginning of Kali Yuga. That's correct. Yeah, is that why big, they're gathering? Yeah, there's a, that's a big to do part sac of it. To do sacrifices for the start of Kali Yuga. Yes, because Sri Krishna has left the earth now. And right. so Kali Yuga has started. And all of these people <laughs> are, are getting together. And I feel so excited. Okay, so this is kind of what I thought about. So one, there's 18 books behind us, okay? I know. 17 and then this one 18 books and like someone memorized that or what somebody channeled that you know what I mean wow I when I was a little girl, someone yeah go ahead I was gonna say when I was a little girl I used to memorize poems and I loved to memorize poems and I was just listening to chapter two of the Gita the other day and I was like I think I can memorize this right was. and then I read that and I was like wow memorized and like channeled so and basically just brought through well, someone channeled it, right? Um, Narayan. Yeah, Narayan. It to the king. Yeah. And the sage, who yes. is the the highest sage right now, overheard. Yes. And memorized it. Yes. To share with everybody out. I'm like, oh. that's why he was the highest sage. He was in the right place. Like Krishna yeah. had him in the right place to hear it. Yeah, we know that. For sure. So that's pretty amazing. So mm -hmm. that so they're all gathering to hear the Bhagavatam and they're excited and they're getting their questions together. They got the sages that imagine that powerful gathering. What was that I, like? I literally have to take deep breaths right now because I get, this is getting me so jazzed up. I know. I'm so it's... jazzed up that this happened yeah. and that we are able to read the books of it and that we it's traveled through time and space to us right here, right now. It makes Beautiful. me so excited. It makes me so grateful. Yeah. So, so grateful. <sighs> and, you know, we learn right from the beginning that everything is Krishna. Right. And, you know, people have been telling us the Gita is kind of like a, a almost like, like a summary. summary kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not surprised to find that coming out immediately. Right. Of course. Of course. Of course. That's what is. chapter two, chapter two is that Krishna the is questions, the... the questions of the sages is the, actually what we were talking about was more the introduction. The questions of the sages starts in chapter one. Oh, okay. The... Chapter three is Krishna is a source of all incarnations. Yeah, it gets to that. It gets to that. Mm -hmm. So we're just like the first questions okay. are surrounding like just the gathering a little bit. Right. Um, and that's when we find out before the recitation of the Bhagavatam, we're supposed to, we're supposed to say these things and. Um, we start to hear about it and we're not even into the Bhagavatam yet. Right. This is just the discussion of the gathering. Right. So actually the summary on chat GPT says about chapter two of the first canto is continues the dialogue. 
This chapter primarily focuses on the questions asked by the sages. The sages are eager to learn about the most auspicious path for humanity, especially in light of the Kali Yoga, right? Right. Um, the ways to counteract the degrading influence of the age of Kali and how to attain liberation or freedom from material entanglement. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is where we get into the modes of material nature, which I was I'm loving. freaking out. This is such similar feelings to when I read the Gita for the first time where yeah. I want to jump up and run around because it's giving me literally so much okay. energy for life that right. all of these things are all at our fingertips right now. Beautiful. Like all of us, everybody listening, we are in the age of Kali Yuga. And so if you're wondering yeah. these questions yourself, we have access. We can get the answer. It's right here. Sutta Gasvami proceeds to answer the inquiries and he discusses the importance of devotion to Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the most effective means. Basically, he says, that's how you get through the age of Kali is you have devotion to Krishna. And if you have right. Krishna and you chant his name and he loves, and wait, we literally have had the Krishna fan club that we started and the official Krishna fan club, let me just say. And one of the things we've been asking is what's his Krishna like? Guess what? There's a whole thing on it in chapter two that literally is what does Krishna like? Yeah. Guess what he likes? He likes the hearing and chanting of his name. Whoop. Thank you. Hare Krishna. He likes divine, the divine pastimes of Lord Krishna and the importance of engaging in devotional service with love and devotion as the ultimate path to liberation. So it starts to talk about what does Krishna like? And it is, it's like chanting his name. He likes hymns. He likes you to read the Vedas. He likes knowledge, like all the stuff that we've been saying and picking up. So I'm grateful for that, but it goes into it even more. So that's where I'm saying the questions of the sages. I love, I love so much, <laughs> so, so much. much. So much because this is, this is what is actually really makes, makes it is the question. It's like the question answer, like the yes. tradition of like asking and answering, asking, asking. It's like here, it's here. It is. It's right here. What, which again is a mirror for to the Gita, right? Because yeah. it, throughout the Gita, it's Arjuna and Krishna kind of going back and forth question answer. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So let's, let's, um, do, let's just read some of it. Okay, well, yeah, let's read some of it let's for read sure. Some of it. Where do we want to begin? The one that I just, since we're talking about Kali Yuga, yeah. right? So Kali Yuga was marked by um, Krishna leaving his body, right? Yeah. Um, and can you talk, can you just talk to us a little bit about Kali actually and just what her energy is because this was named off after her, this age? <sighs> I mean, I don't even feel like uh, educated enough to talk about Kali, to be honest. I mean, well, let's we at least, I just I just want to even say about what her image is. Right. Ah, she okay. is a, a woman and her tongue is often shown out and she has a necklace of skulls around her. Yes. And there is the is, there is the story of I believe that she was saving her husband. And like starts going crazy and just cutting off heads of demons and things like that. Mm -hmm. And the reason that her tongue is sticking out is because she's standing on Shiva. She basically finds herself with her foot on Shiva. We've all seen the picture yep. or that image of Kali with her foot on Shiva and her tongue out. And um, it's she's catching the blood on the tip of her tongue because she doesn't want it to hit Shiva. And she just you see her startled face is almost showing like she suddenly sees that she's become, she's gotten into this rage of destruction yeah. or whatever. And there's that she does represent the destruction energy. Does she mm -hmm. not though? Mm -hmm. Kali's energy does. Absolutely. We were yeah. talking a little bit before we began about how it's the shadow side of things. It is. It's yeah. a side of all of us side of the shadow side of mother earth herself. Yes. That's what you're saying. Named after our, a female deity. So right. is she the only one that could handle the power of the shadow? I wonder Kali will do it and mother like divinity, uh, the divine mother, she will do it. Yeah. She will face her shadow. So here we are with her and we are her children and we're going through it with her. So the question the sages are asking is like, how do we best get through this? Right. And they're about to drop some divine wisdom in her lap. And <laughs> it's so good. It's so, so good. Do you have a spot that you particularly want to begin? Um, kind of, um, so one of the things I want to start on, well, 
first of all, I'm slightly having trouble with the, like the numbering of it. So we are on Canto one, chapter two, I believe text 17. It okay, like, took Canto me a minute. One, it took me a minute to like two. figure out how it works. Yeah. What page are you on? 103. <laughs> 103. <laughs> okay. A twice born sage. Like, they keep saying that. And it's really interesting. And I just like the wording of it. And I don't, I do not know what it means. <laughs> okay. Okay. Text 17. Text 17. You, yes. you want to read it or do you want me to? Yeah. Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is the Paramatta, the super soul. This is my favorite yeah. word ever that I've found so far in all of this, the super soul. And I'm going to use that one. Personnel of Godhead, who is the super soul in everyone's heart and the benefactor of the truthful devotee cleanses desire for the material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who has developed the urge to hear his messages, which are in themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted. So basically he's saying like, um, if you go the truthful devotee, if you have the desire, he will cleanse the desire of material enjoyment from you. He'll help you get to that place where you can detach. And you do understand that it's the, the, the strings of material nature. And I have a little bit yes. out of the Gita that I want to talk about that, that are actually like binding us. They bind us. Mm -hmm. So part of what he's telling us, he's about to tell us is that, how to not have those things happen is just to worship Krishna. And he starts to talk about how to do it, um, properly chanting his name, right? So he says, he continues in text 18, by, regu <gasps> by regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam, by rendering, service to the by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed. And loving service under the personality of Godhead, who is praised with transcendental, so transcendental songs, is established. So also Krishna likes to be sung to, hence the kirtan. Right. Yeah. And that's the kirtan, yep. right? Yep. yep. I guess I know I like I did get that, but I guess I didn't really fully connect that till reading that verse. That they, and that's what it is. And when you think about like bhakti yog yogis, um, kirtan is such a pivotal part of what they do because of this. Yeah, yeah, I get it now. I totally get why the kirtan. I get it. I get it. As soon as irrevocable loving service is established in the heart, the effects of the nature's modes of passion and ignorance, ignorance such as lust, desire, and hankering. <laughs> What's that even? Hankering disappear from the heart. Then the devotee is established in goodness and he becomes completely happy. So yes, I'll take that. I love that. So that's really what it is. It's like establishing the devotion, establishing the loving service and starting to be self-aware, become self-aware. And uh, then what happens is Krishna helps loosen all of your attachments and brings you to a place of bliss. And I love it. And I feel like I get little glimpses of it. You know what I mean? Just the mm -hmm. knowing that that exists mm -hmm. is so beautiful. <laughs> Let me pick up a 20 thus established in the mode of unalloyed goodness. The man whose mind has been enlivened by contact with devotional service to the Lord gains positive scientific knowledge of the personality of Godhead in the stage of liberation from all material association. Okay. That is a mouthful. That's a lot, but I guess how I take that and what is being said here is kind of what we just summarized about, um, actually it keeps going on. I forget text 21 is even better. It is. Yes. Yeah. Thus the knot in the heart is pierced and all mis misgivings are cut to pieces. The chain of fruit of actions is terminated when one sees the self as master. So good. So good. I love everything Literally about so this. good. Thus the knot in the heart is pierced. Ah, oh, how many of us are carrying around a knot in the heart? Honestly, that needs to be pierced with some like love from the divine, some knowledge, some, you know, some feeling, some compassion, some, you know, and what do we do to get it? We just, we offer devotion and we've been really working through what does that even mean? Right. And so we've been doing these things that, um, around us, the people are like, y'all are crazy right now. And yeah, maybe, but like what we're searching for is a manner of devotion that gets this. Cause I want to have my heart, heart pierced. You know what I mean? I want to have that bliss and I'm really striving for it. So I'm here for all that. And I love Kirtan. 
I so love much. Kirtan. So like, I get it. I get it. You get, you get into a state. Yeah. It puts you into a whole different state when you really, when you really let yourself go into it. And I know that, you know, you'll see people doing Kirtan and it feels a little maybe different or awkward if you haven't been around it, just the loosening up of your body and letting yeah. go of total freedom is really when you get to the state of bliss, when you really let it go. Yeah. And I just have to give a shout out to Wisdom of the Sages podcast once again. And they often talk about like the God-shaped hole in your heart, ah, that yeah. everybody has this God-shaped hole in their heart. And by rendering devotion, undevote devotional service unto God, yeah. um, it fills your heart. And that's that not, it, un, it literally like what? Yeah. And so it's such a blessing to be able to hear this. And I think that for a lot of people, like it, it's easy to tell someone, right, go read the Sri Mog Bhagavatam. But like, this has been, for me, this has been years in the making to even get to the point to like open up the book, to have a discussion with you about it, you know? So I think all in due time. Everything is exactly as, it, as it's supposed mm -hmm. to be for sure. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's beautiful. And I want to um, talk a little bit more about the three modes of material nature mm -hmm. or the modes of material nature, which we hear about. And I know we hear about it later because I have been listening to it and I know they yep. talk about it and they get into that. Um, but I was like looking in the Gita to really get a little bit more on this. And I found a couple of verses and I'm going to go back to the um, Franklin Edgerton version, which I realized something about um, the different versions of the Gita. We've been hearing from a lot of people, a lot of comments about, you know, this version or that, and we hear you, we definitely hear you. This is the one I found first. So I feel like this is the one Krishna gave me, you right. know what I mean? And Krishna knows I love words. He knows I love poetry and he knows how connected I am to that language. And this is pure poetry. This yeah. version I love. I, I absolutely am obsessed with this version of it just because it is so poetic. And that's where I was saying, like, I think I can memorize this thing. I know I can mm -hmm. just because it like, it's the emotion in it that like really touches you. It's what, it's what it is. Okay. So I'm going to go into the Gita and I'm on chapter three, verse 27. Are these even called verses in the Gita? Or is that like a Bible thing that we're translating over and calling it verses? I think it is verse. I think. You think it is verse? I do. Okay. Well, maybe I, it's text. Maybe it's text. Okay. Please someone in the comments tell if it's chapter two text. No. Right. Or whatever. Um, you know. Right. Okay. So he's talking about um, people doing things where he's talking about action in, in chapter three performed by material nature's strands are actions altogether. He whose soul is deluded by the eye faculty imagines I am the agent. But he who knows the truth about the separation of the soul from both the strands and actions, the strands act upon the strands, knowing this is not attached to the actions. Deluded by the strands of material nature, men are attached to the actions of the strands. These dull folk of imperfect knowledge, the man of perfect knowledge should not disturb. Okay, so earlier they were talking about like letting the... um ignorant folk who are attached to the actions, just be attached, let them be attached. Okay. That's what mm -hmm. he's talking about here. The dull folk of imperfect knowledge, the man of perfect knowledge should not disturb on me, all actions casting with mind on the oversoul being free from longing and from selfishness fight, casting off thy fever who this, my doctrine constantly follow such men full of faith and not murmuring. They too are freed from the effect of actions, but those who murmuring against it do not follow my doctrine, them deluded in all knowledge, know to be lost, the fools. <laughs> One acts in conformity with his own material nature, even the wise man, even wise men follow their own nature. What will restraint accomplish of every sense upon the objects of that sense, longing and loathing are fixed. Uh, that's what he was saying about like the, you know, it's like the polarity. We talk about that, the longing and loathing. One must not come under control of these two for these are his two enemies. Yeah. Ugh. 
better one's own duty imperfect than another's duty well performed. Mm -hmm. Better death doing one's own duty. Another duties bring danger, brings danger. So that's where it's like, be on your path, be on your own path and be trying to follow people's path. Your microphone cut out. And Krishna in this and what he's saying to him and just Krishna's questions are so vulnerable, actually. If you re- are not Christians, but Arjuna's questions, yeah. You think about it. Even, um, even the question of like, Christian, I can't do this. Like, I'm. It's too much. It's too hard. I don't want to. It's. I don't want to kill them. And and Christian's answer is kind of brutally like, no, get up or whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, I love like the like the intimacy between the two of them as they're discussing. And what we're seeing in the Bhagavatam is the same level. Okay. Yeah. It's like a they're so wise. Okay. And they're so, um, able to just, um, be vulnerable enough to, to ask and answer because we get prideful as hell. And we like, think we know things and, you know, and so even to be humble enough. And I think that's part of what Christian's talking about here of, um, letting go of all the strands of action and all these things. And that's what they're saying in the, in the, Bhagavatam there about um, just actually, if you just go to Krishna and love Krishna, he's going to slice all that away for you. Yeah, absolutely. They talk about those three modes of material nature and like the whole idea of hearing this knowledge is supposed to help you transcend those lower two of rajas, which is like action and passion, like materialism, right? And um, tamas, which is like inertia and like dullness, ignorance. Yeah. We transcend those and reach sattva, which is just goodness and purity through the hearing of this transcendental knowledge. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And, uh, you know, I don't know that I was necessarily even ready to hear it till now. Exactly. You know, I'm a lot older than you and I, I've heard a lot of things. You know what else I was thinking the other day? Actually, this is really helping me and making me understand what Jesus was talking about, Mm -hmm. because Jesus was talking about all this stuff that was so above what the listeners were able to understand. And when he was talking about turn the other cheek, it's because I, he had no enemy. He truly understood, Mm -hmm. love your enemy. He got it. He got what was being said. Um, I don't know to him by whatever channel divine channel was coming in through him. Like he understood about loving one another in a way that gets lost. I think, um, sometimes in, um, kind of the translation of things and the, all of the, I don't know, all of the, I don't even know how to say it. It's like, we have so much energy on what, what is Jesus? What is Jesus saying? What is the Bible? Like, it's the, it's almost like when I go back all the way back here to the Gita and the Bhagavatam, it's like, no, Jesus was talking about love and yeah. actually devotion and service. And what did he do when he was alive? He literally served people. He yeah. literally served the poor. You know what I mean? And he was like, no, that's the ones. That's the ones I'm going to heal. Mm-hmm. I'm going to heal the lepers. I'm going to heal the sick. And why? Because he was offering pure devotion. And yeah. like, uh, I love that. And I've never seen Jesus that way. When I was even like a worshiper of Jesus, I wasn't able to see him to this depth until I see him in Krishna because that's Krishna. Yeah. And I see that and I feel that. And it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful to know that, um, that divine presence, that divine, um, knowledge is here for us on earth because, it is the age of Kali up in here, right? You know, it's been wild up in here. We have aliens in the mall in uh, Miami. We have, I didn't even see that. You know, Oh, wow. Yeah. I know we have airplane doors blowing off airliners. It's been crazy in the world and it's going to get crazy as we get closer to the uh, eclipses and stuff like that. So like Right. All these things that we're expecting to see. We this is where you have to go back to knowing what are we doing here and what am I doing here and the super soul and the over soul. Thank you. I love that. That super soul thing. I was like, yes. And that's yes. why we read and that's why we read this. And this is why it's been gifted to us at this time. Like you said, yeah. we weren't ready. Our consciousness yeah. wasn't ready for whatever reason. Um, and now we are. And 
I think it's just such a gift to even be able to be speaking about this publicly on YouTube and sharing it with hopefully this touches exactly that it's going to touch exactly who it's supposed to. Yeah, I think I know it well. I know mm-hmm. it well because the messages reach us that the universe wants us to hear. Yeah. So um, I get messages from the people who are making the comments. Honestly, it's like I'm learning every single moment. Absolutely. Uh, yes. From, from everything even we're talking about. And yeah. even just leading up to doing this podcast, I listened to the first like three chapters of the Bhagavatam like three times and I read Same. it a couple of times. Same. And the first time I, I don't know that I even, I was like, what is even happening here? Okay. Again, second time what's happening. Wait, I think I'm getting it. Wait. Okay. There's a King, there's sages, the Ganges river, like, okay. Questions. All right. Good questions. Okay. I hear it. I hear it. And, um, I think part of it is just taking it all in energetically. Mm-hmm. Let's just talk about the energetics of the Bhagavatam and the Gita. Wow. I'm, I mean, this is what I'm talking about when I said, like, I yeah. feel like I need to jump up and run around my house like five times because it's so much. It's just so, it's just so yeah. much. It's, it's so, so much. much. It feels a lot, but it's like, it's so much knowledge and bliss and I just you feel sapa. the weight of it. Well, it's sat, it's sattvic, right? It's like that highest material of highest of material nature. And so with that comes like the shedding of other layers so that you're able to even reach that. Yeah. And that's like a big deal. That's a lot of work, you know? Yeah, it does feel like that, but it's like joyful work over here. I love uh, yes. it. Yes, it's absolutely I can't stop joyful. reading it. I can't stop listening to it. I was um, saying that before we began, like just looking at the book, I'm like not even listening to you. I'm like, I can't, <laughs> I like, I'm, I can't stop reading it. I can't. Yeah. And the more times I see it and hear it, the more it's ingraining and the more I understand it. And then it feels even more exciting to me when I finally feel like I'm hitting a new level of understanding, which can sometimes happen just by simply yeah. reading it three times, you know? Yeah. It's well, incredible. because we just read why we just read what's happening. Yeah. Krishna, it was just explained to us um, yeah. that what's happening is you're doing devotion by reading the word and reading the Vedas and like reading this information. And Krishna is helping you hear it at a higher level every single time. So it's like the the energetic messages come through. So yes, Hare Krishna, I'll take that. I accept that. And it's done that way because he's so compassionate and he knows how we need to hear it that way. I feel, you know what I mean? I guess that's yeah. the vein of compassion I hear from Krishna because like we are crazy up in here as humans, you know, we get attached to things. We get angry. We get sad we forget who we are we hate everything it's like and like even knowing this right even knowing even what knowing we're reading this, with this we can still, still happen and that's why it says um where was it by regular attendance in the in classes on the Bhagavatam, by rendering yeah. service to the pure devotee all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed like yeah. by regular attendance by doing this regularly somewhere else too and one of the other i can't remember if it's in the gita or maybe it's in the yoga sutras it talks about um practice and um devotion regularly without any um oh, what is the word i'm trying to say without interruption ah okay is is like key to things and that makes sense uh-huh. right i mean and you think about the king who went to the yeah. bank of the river why did he do that because he didn't want interruption he wanted to be able to spend your right. time in devotion before death right and because we live in the material world you know we have to eat we right. sleep like all of those things are interruption um even if they're not i mean they're necessary for our human bodies right this is why they go into the forest at at retirement age so that they can fully devote their lives to this yeah, it makes sense. I will say that one kind of thought I have had in the back of my head about this whole thing about like losing material um, joys and that type of thing is, and maybe I get this wrong and maybe I'm just thinking of it in the wrong way, but like, I really like being happy and joyful and like enjoying like life. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, I mm-hmm. know we're supposed to let go of the enjoyments of life but like life is so good, even on top of knowing how crazy and awful it can be at times. I love life. And I just feel like a joy inside my body for it. And I don't want to give that up, but I wonder if I'm just thinking of it wrong because 
I um, think so. It's not so much that I'm attached to the things in my life. It's just that life keeps like delivering to me over and over just things that are amazing and things that I love. Yeah. And even when they come and go, even when they go and even knowing that all things are temporary and everything will change and everything will come and go out of my life. Yes. I can believe that. And I can let that go. And I can know that. And I've lived long enough now that I've seen entire homes full of items come and go out of my Mm -hmm. life. Right. So it's like the Mm -hmm. items, the objects, it's not what I care about. It's not really that it's more just the joy of being alive, just being a human. I'm not sure how else to say it. Sometimes I just say, I say to myself, I just want to enjoy every second while I'm here in this body, while I get a chance to do this. And so maybe that's more attachment than I should have, um, for the human experience. And maybe that is what I'm going to need to shed over time when I get ready. (laughs) But I think so too, that like we are controlled by these three modes of material nature. And so I don't think that that's such a bad thing. That's to me, pretty sattvic, right? That you're thinking about like the goodness and the purity and the joy of all things. And yeah, maybe it is like a needing to shed that to some extent, but we aren't quite sages yet or in this lifetime anyway. Right. And so it's like, we're going to be ruled by all three of those modes, whether we would like to or not. We all are. We all are. We all are. And, and actually like, even just like reading about the sages and the rishis and who those beings even were to get to the point of being where they were at. Just so few of us ever do that. So few of us are even awake or aware enough to even be, you know, it seems like slightly self-aware at times. It seems like a lot of people okay. are not even, don't even care about other people. It seems like, so, um, it is the special being that gets to that point. And I feel like it just is that thing that it's just a process. It's just a process in the book that we read over and over the books we read, the knowledge we're hearing. It's like, that's pretty much what is being said. So I feel I can trust that if I just go back to the love and devotion, I can just do kirtan <laughs> and that like will pierce some, some things out of my heart that I don't need or want anymore. Done. Yeah. Cause done. I love kirtan. <laughs> Absolutely. Amazing. I want to read um, the next couple of verses here because they actually go into explaining the, the modes of nature. We are trying to find what verses they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. It, is, it is the next couple of ones. Okay. Um, and then my dog is trapped in this room, so I think I'll have to <laughs> depart after this because yeah. he's starting to <laughs> jump up on everything. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a Canto 1, Chapter 2, Text 22. Certainly, therefore, since time immemorable, all transcendentalists have been rendering devotional service to Lord Krishna, the personality of Godhead, with great delight because such devotional service is enlivening to the self. This is text 23. The transcendental personality of Godhead is indirectly associated with the three modes of material nature, namely passion, goodness, and ignorance. There we go. And just for the material world's creation, maintenance, and destruction— He accepts the three qualitative forms of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Of these three, all human beings can derive ultimate benefit from Vishnu, the form of the quality of goodness. Chapter 24. And I know this is a lot, but I feel like reading them, these three together, kind of bring it all together. Yeah, yeah. Firewood, Firewood is a transformation of earth, but smoke is better than the raw wood, and fire is still better. For by the fire, we can derive the benefits of superior knowledge through Vedic sacrifices. Similarly, passion, rajas, is better than ignorance, tamas, but goodness, sattva, is best, is best because by goodness, one can come to realize the absolute truth. Beautiful. And so, like, when you were explaining, like, wanting to suck the, the good and the joy out of every moment, yeah keep doing that because ultimately that will come to help you to realize the ultimate truth. I'll, I, you know, I'm down for that. I take that. And I remember reading, yeah, I remember reading that the first time and actually that's now the second time I've heard it. So I still need to hear it a third time, I guess. Oh, for sure. (laughs) Again and again and again. Again and again, again and again. 
Yeah, there's <laughs> there's spruce. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? Um, this is probably a good place to stop anyway. And yeah. um, next week we are going to uh, be talking about Rade, and I'm really yes. excited to talk about Rade Krishna and Rade. And what is that? I feel oh, lucky in my yeah. Hey, thank. You. can't hear you um oh there you are you're back it's been going on and in and out like that so one time okay that's our well there's our cue to go from the universe so Hare Krishna thank you so much thank you so much Lord Krishna for being uh in our life and that's all that's all I want to say thank you so much thank you so much for being with us um we appreciate you so love and light and blessings to you and we'll see you next time see you next time Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.